Hey, this is Dave Hompez from hpylorisymptoms.com. Um, quick video because I just wanted to clear up some of the confusion around the medical treatments for H. pylori. First of all, I'm not a medical doctor, so I'm not allowed to offer any medical advice, but I've worked with um, thousands of people around the world helping them overcome digestive issues, and because I had H. pylori myself, I know quite a, little, uh, quite a lot about H. pylori, and I've written um, uh, one book on H. pylori. I'm currently writing my second book on H. pylori. Now, as you probably know, if you've been to see your doctor and been diagnosed with H. pylori, you uh, will tend to be prescribed something called triple therapy. And triple therapy is a combination of a proton pump inhibitor drug, which knocks down the acid levels in your stomach, and two antibiotics, which then kill the H. pylori. The reason they give you the antacid is not necessarily to help uh, control your symptoms so much, although it does in some cases help to control the symptoms of heartburn and acid reflux, but it's more to actually make the antibiotics more effective. Now the reason they give you two antibiotics is that they found probably 15 years ago now that one on its own didn't work, so they had to do two at the same time and the proton pump inhibitor. That causes a lot of problems because it creates a lot of side effects for people and some people can't complete the treatment. Now, Side effects aside, how effective is triple therapy? Well, um, the most recent data that I've seen, which comes from uh, something called the Maastricht Consensus, it's literally where this whole group of people called the European Study Group, uh, Helicobacter Study Group, get together in a part of Europe or somewhere else around the world, and they sit around for a week talking about H. pylori and all the research that's been done in the previous year. So at this particular one in 2012, they had, I think it was 44 different experts from 24 different countries all talking about various topics related to H. pylori. And what they found, what they said and concluded about the triple therapy is that it's probably only 70% effective now around the world. It's more effective in some areas than others. And the reason for that is that in certain areas of the world, H. pylori has become very resistant to one of the main antibiotics that they use, which is called clarithromycin. So the standard triple therapy has, has consistently been clarithromycin with either metronidazole or amoxicillin. Now, the resistance rates to metronidazole and amoxicillin are also a concern, but they're not as high as they are for clarithromycin. So if the treatment doesn't work, that's usually one of the reasons why, as well as non-compliance uh, where people just don't take the regimen properly either because they forget or because they have side effects. Now, one of the biggest problems is, once that treatment has failed and it hasn't worked, where do you go, what do you do? Well, the medical system now has two or three other kinds of treatment that you can use. One of them is called sequential therapy, which is where instead of giving the drugs all at once, they'll give them uh, back to back, okay? So you'll have the proton pump inhibitor, the antacid, and then you'll take them back to back one after the other. That still doesn't work for a lot of people, and it still causes side effects for people. The other strategy is one called quadruple therapy, which is where instead of giving you two drugs to kill H. pylori, they'll give you either three drugs or they'll actually give you something called bismuth, which is a natural compound, and you'll take all of that whole concoction at once. So there are options once the triple therapy uh, doesn't work, if it doesn't work. Now remember, we're not talking about everybody, because we still think that seven out of 10 people do get success using the triple therapy. This video is really specifically for uh, you if you want to avoid the medical treatments completely and want an alternative, or if you've taken the triple therapy and it hasn't worked, you had side effects, and you don't want to go down that route again. So what are the alternatives if the medical treatments don't work? Well, uh, as I said to you, I had H. pylori myself. In fact, I had it twice. I managed to eradicate it twice using nothing but herbs natural approach, antimicrobial herbs that did the job for me. That wasn't the only thing I did. I changed my diet to an anti-inflammatory diet and I improved my hormonal health and took other stressors away from my body at the same time to get the results that I achieved. Now, um, I've written a book called The H. Pylori Diet in which I've documented most of the strategies that I use to improve my own situation, which is now going back seven years. Uh, but that I've also used to help literally uh, a couple of thousand or more people achieve the same results. 
Now, another caveat with the medical treatment is that when you take all those antibiotics, you can knock down the friendly bacteria levels in your digestive system. And those friendly bacteria are very important. And when you knock them down, you can actually trigger or allow the overgrowth of other organisms that shouldn't really overgrow. You may have heard of Candida, which is a yeast and fungal organism. That one can overgrow. And in fact, the research shows, even when you just take acid inhibiting drugs, it can increase the number of Candida organisms in your stomach within a very short space of time. As a matter of fact, that's 36 to 48 hours. Now the yeast and fungal overgrowth Candida can cause the same or very similar symptoms to H. pylori itself. So how do you know whether it's the H. pylori, the Candida, or whether it's even some of the foods that you're eating that are causing your symptoms? We see a lot of people with intestinal parasites, things like Blastocystis hominis, Giardia, uh, and Dolimax nana. We see worms in people, and we see other opportunistic uh, bacteria and pathogenic bacteria like Clostridium difficile, Campylobacter, Salmonella, etc. when we run our stool testing with people. So in my view, and of course I'm biased because this the line of work that I'm in and the experiences that I had myself, is that in order to effectively deal with H. pylori and all the collateral damage that it can do, it's much better to look at things from a slightly holistic, more holistic viewpoint. Have a look at what you're eating, remove the bad foods and put more good foods in there. Take a look at what's going on in your digestive system over and above H. pylori using a private stool test that you can do at home. And then, and then take the actions based on the scientific data that you get back so that you're not only taking pills to remove a bad bug, you're also optimizing your own digestive system, your own health as well. Now, if you want more information on how to do that, you can actually get the first few chapters of my book, The H. pylori Diet, at my website. The URL is www.h-pylori-symptoms.com. Uh, I'll be waiting to see you there. I hope this video has been helpful. And as I said at the start, my name is Dave Hompes from hpylorisymptoms.com. See you next time.